What's going on, everybody, and welcome to Unsportsmanlike Conduct. I'm Christian, Frank from Linemaker Sports. We're back. We are previewing week 15 in the NFL and the NBA season, which is less than a week away. We cannot wait for that. Without further ado, let's just get into football, and we will zip through these games coming up this weekend. We have some Saturday football. I know. Two, Two games, games on Saturday. Yeah. So the first one is the Bills, the surging Buffalo Bills in Denver to take on the Broncos. The Bills were five and a half point favorites to start off the week, and by now that line has shifted. Now they're six point favorites in Denver in high altitude. Frank? The Bills, like I said last week, great all around team. They really are. Yeah. Like they are they're pretty they're pretty solid. And they even showed that against Pittsburgh that they can play defense and they can score on offense. And Josh Allen looks great. He's looking in great form and perfect timing too, going right into the playoffs and everything like that. Denver on the flip side, they got an okay defense. If you want to give them that, that they're an okay defense. Their offense with Drew Locke is a little questionable. Drew Locke throws some uh, questionable passes. So this looks like a walk in the park for Buffalo, but they're on the road. Yeah. And as a road favorite, you always got to be a little bit wary of, of what's going on when it comes to a road favorite. So this game is a little bit of a toss-up. That line is kind of scary. It's kind of high for me. I'm, it is, I'm especially for a, road, for a road favorite. Maybe a stay away. I don't know. Uh, the night game on Saturday is Carolina going into Green Bay. The news for this one pretty much is that Christian McCaffrey is not going to play. At least it looks that way right now. So with him not playing, uh, this should be a easy game for the Packers. Not an easy game, I guess, because every game in the NFL is not easy. They're difficult. <laughs> Wins are difficult. That's for sure. <laughs> but the Packers are rolling. They're right now, obviously, the first seed in the NFC, so they have something to play for. The Panthers don't have much to play for. They're pretty much out of the playoffs. And without McCaffrey, that's their top playmaker. I just think uh, Green Bay should handle their business. But Green Bay also hasn't had that, like, bad loss of the season yet, I feel like. I mean, unless you count the Vikings game that they lost. But um, I don't know. The Green Bay is always scary when they're, like, a, a super favorite in the game because I think that they play up and play down to their competition. In so. the defense. The defense another thing with Green Bay. It's just yeah. the defense. It's hard for them to cover point spreads. The reason being is because their defense likes to give up points. And like I said, week in and week out, to cover high point spreads, you got to have a good offense followed by a good defense. Yeah. And uh, don't worry. We didn't forget. We're still going to give you some betting advice after we go through this slate of games. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for some advice from Frank, it's coming. Um, the Bears go into Minnesota. The Vikings were favored by six when this line opened up. Now they're only favored by three. I don't know how this is in a pick -em game because, I mean... They're both six and seven. They're both are trying to scrape into that last playoff spot. And the Vikings just are still banged up. And obviously they have young rookies on defense. So it's a tough one. And Mitch Trubisky has been playing better than Nick Foles was for those weeks that he was in there. So mm -hmm. Mitch has tried to uh, reclaim some respect, I guess, in Chicago. And just maybe at the perfect time that the Bears start playing good just to miss the playoffs, just so <laughs> that they don't get off Mitch Trubisky. And as a Vikings fan, I would love that. Keep him as a starter for years to come. That'd yeah. be great. I think this is going to be a good game. I think this will definitely be an entertaining game. And the line has shifted a lot from yeah. Vikings minus six down to minus three. So a lot of people jumping on Chicago. And obviously that's a entail of a little overreaction from last week, their blowout win. But uh I like I agree with you. This is basically a pretty even matchup, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so this is kind of tough tough to see who really is gonna win this game. It's very it is a pretty much even matchup, especially if the Bears defense shows up like uh, they did last week. Kirk Cousins might be in a little bit of a trouble. Yeah, it really depends. That Bears the Bears defense has been kind of I, I wouldn't say up and down because they're still a good defense, but like they played the Lions and gave up thirty four. Yeah. And then last week they gave up just seven to the Texans. So uh, it's kind of weird when it, it shifts like that. The line on the points for this game is 47, and it hasn't moved. So I think that's about right. And then, uh, obviously, then that's what makes gambling so tough. Um, <clears throat> Tom Brady and the Bucks go into Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Division game. I think they haven't played each other this season yet. So they play this week, and then they play in Week 17 again. Mm -hmm. um, Tampa finally got a win against Minnesota last week after sliding and reeling there for a couple games. But... Even that win, I watched that game in the first quarter. Brady looked so he looked off. Um, like we said last time, maybe he was just trying to get warmed up. But it just seems like yeah, it takes him a little <clears throat> bit. It takes him a quarter or two to get warmed up now to really get going. So uh, the the spread jumped up massively yeah. in this one too, from one and a half to down to six. Now Atlanta's getting six, 
and you think this is definitely a game Tampa cannot lose. They can't lose right. this game. So they, uh, I think it's honestly the point spread is pretty safe, maybe up to about six and a half, maybe. Because yeah. I do think that Tampa needs to win this game, and if they're going to win this game, they're probably going to win by at least a touchdown. And at this point, if it's not even just for the wins, they need to start winning and playing well to get warmed up for the playoffs, yeah. obviously with that coming. So uh, that should be interesting in Atlanta. The Jaguars going to Baltimore to take on, hopefully, not diarrhea Lamar Jackson now. I hope his stomach issues have kind of uh, <laughs> fixed themselves. Um, <laughs> but the Ravens are huge favorites at home. Uh the Jaguars are 1-12, and hoping probably for a Jets loss because if they somehow end up with the same record as the Jets by strength of schedule, the Jaguars would end up with the first pick. And you know what that means, Trevor Lawrence. And um, that's good news for whoever ends up landing that guy. So Baltimore, obviously the clear favorite here. They kind of had a huge, not kind of, had a huge win in Cleveland to kind of right in the ship for them. They're 8-5. and five. They're trying to get into playoff positioning, so they need this win. So I don't see a letdown, but with that line being so high, that's the only question. And Jacksonville is a completely horrible squad, so uh, I, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to Baltimore, they do, of course, they need to win this game. They definitely need to win this game, and I think they will win this game. But like you said, it's just a tale. Are they going to win by more than two touchdowns? Yeah, I don't, I don't they're know. They're going to win by more than two touchdowns because... Their defense looks a little suspect, to be honest. The defense, Baltimore's defense looks a little suspect, especially against those Cleveland Browns. They go and put 40-plus on them. Mm -hmm. Baltimore's defense doesn't look like the Baltimore defense of old. So. Yeah, and Minshew's going to start uh, yeah. for the Jaguars this weekend, so they're done with Mike Glennon. Yeah, so, so. that's going to be a, that's, that's a tough one to uh, to cap there, to figure if, if they're going to cover two touchdowns on that, especially with that suspect defense. Yeah. Uh, New England goes into Miami to take on the Dolphins. Must, must win for New England. Obviously, if they lose, I mean, their season's kind of already in the shitter, but if they lose this game, it's completely over. Um, and they're playing a Dolphins team with Tua, and we know about Bill Belichick and what he likes to do with rookie quarterbacks. He took her, took care of Justin Herbert early in the season when they destroyed them, and uh, I kind of feel like he could do the same with Tua here. Uh, the only difference is Tua hasn't played much. I mean, he's gotten like, what, three full games in at this point, but Bill Belichick just has a way with those young quarterbacks, so I'm looking for that matchup. I'm trying to see how Tua's going to play against that Bill Belichick defense and uh, the Dolphins are favored by a point and a half if they win obviously they're keeping up with the playoff position as well so things are getting heated here like at this point even the shitty games are good games because there's a team in there that desperately needs to win and can't afford a letdown so we'll see how this one goes it's your Patriots I do, what do, you, do you want them to win? Or are you kind of like I kind of wrote the season off for him, <laughs> honestly, because right, I just don't feel like I don't feel like Cam Newton's the, the, the is going to do anything for them. I don't think even if they were to get to the playoffs in a wild card spot, they're probably just going to get blown out, honestly, because their defense is very good, but their offense is a horrible struggle. They really don't have nothing going on offense. So in this matchup, like I was telling Christian earlier, this is kind of like a little bit of a cancellation matchup because mm -hmm. you got. An okay offense with Miami, especially when Tua is playing, going against a great defense. Then you got on the flip side, you got an okay offense with New England, actually below okay offense with New England, going against a great defense with Miami. So put those two and two together, and you're probably going to get and guess what I'm going to tell you guys later. Yeah, <laughs> <this> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> um, yeah, and one little thing that I told you earlier too is I heard on, on the herd uh, that uh, those are my sources mm. that. There's a theory out there that there's a chance old man Belichick tries to screw over the New York Jets in week 17 if the Jets are still winless and the Jags are still one and blank. Well, I guess it would be one and four, 15 by then, because or 14. Because the theory is, obviously, Bill Belichick doesn't want to see Trevor Lawrence in that division. So if the Patriots are completely out of it, maybe he starts Jared Stidham. <laughs> So purposely let the Jets win the game so the Jets don't end up getting the first pick in the draft. Do you see something like that happening? I think that that's, that's definitely like something that? that, yeah, Belichick is petty and will do something like oh, that. I he totally definitely see will. Because I I mean, there's been plenty of instances with when they try to take delayed game penalties to, mm -hmm. to further the mm -hmm. punt. And, uh, and Belichick is like, I'll decline that. No, I'm not going to take that. Man. He does act a little petty with something. And then he the post-game like interview that. would be like, was there anything to do with the first pick? And <laughs> yeah. then like, what are you talking But about? if the Jets get wind of that, 
Who knows? The Jets just might not even show up for to the game. Well, you know the players. They might even. Win. They, could, they could just not show up to the game, and then it'll be an automatic loss. I so. just feel like the players are gonna be <laughs> wanting to win because yeah. obviously they don't want to be in the record books as the 0 and 16 team. Yeah. So that's true. Ah, we'll see. That we'll see could get exciting. <laughs> but that that'll be later. Yeah. Uh, the Detroit Lions, who are five and eight, and their season is pretty much over. This. We can't really even cancel anyone out this year because yeah. of the extra playoff spot and the it's fact true. that there's so many teams just kind of like in that 500 area. Like the Lions could win three straight, get to eight and eight, and if the teams that are in the playoffs right now just lose the rest of the games, they could sneak in somehow. So, but they won't. But Detroit <laughs> is in Tennessee to take on the Titans, who are nine and four. Right now, they're a game ahead of the teams like the Ravens, teams like the Dolphins. So they need this win to just stay in playoff positioning. Uh, they're favored by 11 at home. That's actually a really, really high line considering the Lions have Matt Stafford playing. And, uh, you know, they only lost to the uh, to the Packers by a touchdown last week. So I don't know why Tennessee is getting this much respect. And I think it's probably because, again, from last week, the blowout win for them last week. So... They're probably getting a little bit overhyped, a little bit more money is getting put on them because they looked great last week. Mm-hmm. Now you're going against Detroit, and Detroit is bottom of the barrel team. They're really not that great, but look to be playing a little bit better since they fired their coach. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't really trust the Titans minus 11. I, I can't that's, trust that's them. A that's a lot line. of points yeah. for them. Yeah. I can't um, trust them with that. For sure. Then the Texans are division game playing in Indy against the Colts who are also 9-4. So they're, them and the Titans are battling for that division, and if yeah. not the division, the wild card spot. So And this is a game where Houston should have won the they last They just played up, two weeks ago. And they should have won if it wasn't for a fumble on the one-yard line right at the end of the right. game that ended up, the, you know, <laughs> the Colts are very lucky that they won that game because that should have been a Houston game. Mm-hmm. And now the point spread went from in that game it was only minus three, and now we're going, in this game, Indiana is minus seven and a half. Yeah. So I don't really see what has changed much since that Other game. Other than maybe the motivation. Obviously, yeah. when you get smacked by the Bears like the Texans did, yeah. you might think that they're just like, man, this season's just shit. Yeah. And then they're just kind of like giving up on it. That's what I would guess. And the Colts obviously have been playing better. They whooped the Raiders last week. So it's true. maybe that's what people are counting on. But division games always seem to end up kind of being close. Yeah. So And this follows and now, now falls under the key number of minus 7.5. So they obviously they got to win by a touchdown and a field goal right. to get that to go. So that's a little suspect because, I, like I said, I didn't really see too much that's changed. But like you said, motivation, that's about basically maybe, maybe it. Maybe that's, that's it. That's yeah. what has changed and the home field advantage, of course. Yeah, which actually the Colts in Indy do have some fans. So, yeah, but so we'll I wouldn't get that much. Uh, the 49ers are 5-8 and eight and they take on the Cowboys in Dallas. Uh, this is like a shit bowl because, yeah, I mean, basically. they're both pretty bad teams. <laughs> but actually could make for a great game because they're both kind of similar uh, and they're both similar records. The Cowboys always, you know, if they lose a home game, it's just like you're going to get that shot of Jerry Jones up there in his suite. <laughs> just kind of like with that eye to ass face. Yeah, and, that's uh, true. Sometimes that's like just entertaining to look at, you know? Jerry Jones trying to do too much and be <laughs> the general manager for a team where he should just kind of chill, be the owner, and let people do their jobs, mm-hmm. I, in my opinion. Um, so the Cowboys are underdogs at home to the Niners. I, I'm obviously thinking because the Niners have a pretty good defense. Uh, and then, I mean... I, I think that the reason behind that is definitely the Niners are heavy offensive run. They mm-hmm. love to run the ball and Dallas is Cannot horrible against the, run. Anyone against the run. So yeah. I think this is definitely a reason why we got that they're a road favorite is because that that could be a huge mismatch when it comes down to it. That a team that runs heavy going against a team that can't stop the run that yeah. might fall for a blowout victory. So we'll see what happens in the this ca- game. The Cowboys are 2-4 and four in Jerry World at home yeah. while the 49ers are 4-2 and two on the road. So... I don't know. Maybe that line is where it should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seattle <clears throat> on the road to take on the Washington football team. The over/under hasn't changed from 45 uh, from 44.5. However, the seems like the money's on Seattle. Uh, they were three-point favorites to start off the week. By now, they're five and a half-point favorites. Uh, you know, Washington is six and seven. They, Washington's they picked up a win. Good. Yeah, they Their picked up a win last good. week. And uh, you know they're put. They're, I mean they're on top of the NFC East right now. So I don't know. I we'll see. We may ca- one of us may come back to this game later in the show. <laughs> uh, Washington is has a great defense. Seattle's defense is not that good. Mm-mm. 
And I don't know. Yeah, this. I guess the question is the, the quarterback for the Washington football team because Alex Smith, uh, he just keeps he he starts the game, but he rarely finishes it. Yeah. He'll get like a nat, like an injury, and then they're like scared that yeah, his leg's gonna fall it, off yeah, again. So they're like, true. but we'll see. Well, I mean, I, I think kind of maybe this number's off a little bit. But yeah, I guess we'll come. Unless back. Unless Haskins starts because he hasn't really made. I know he all. hasn't did nothing. So maybe that's <laughs> what that is. Uh, Philly is in Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Uh, Jalen Hurts is starting again. What What do you do with your Eagles now with Carson Wentz? I don't. I mean, I just, I just use them as the backup, honestly, for right now. Like uh, I felt this way at the beginning backup, of the year. I, I said that Jalen Hurts should have been probably halfway through the year. He should have been starting. And look, he starts, and now he's he looks pretty good. He's a mobile quarterback, so he's he he can run in chances where Wentz wouldn't run to avoid bad passes, and his. Passing is pretty decent. So maybe I mean, a team ends up trading for. I mean, the thing is that Wentz has this contract that they're like no one will trade for. But yeah, I mean, you Wentz know, maybe is, a team like the Jets if they don't get the first pick or the Jaguars or one of those. It's, teams it's a just, tough situation for them with, with Wentz because it's like they they don't want to give up on him. But I don't know. He just he hasn't looked good for like two seasons now. So I well, mean, why not? I mean, honestly, if the Jets don't get the number one pick. You know, so you end up drafting like a Justin Fields, not Trevor Lawrence. No. Yeah. You get Wentz in there. You have Wentz just start for a year, you know, and then just have the kid, the rookie sit for a year. But I mean, teams don't really do that anymore with the rookies. But I mean, it's worked before, so yeah. maybe that's the strategy. I don't know. But uh, the Cardinals, on the other hand, need the win. They're seven and six. They slid uh, back into the playoff picture after a big win last week in New York against the Giants. So uh, they're looking to stay in that playoff picture. Uh, and this is an iffy game because, like I said, Jalen Hurts kind of adds a little bit of, you know, if it was Carson Wentz, you're like, oh, the Eagles, they suck. They're going to mm-hmm. get beat. But with Jalen Hurts in there, they beat the Saints last week. Their offense week. looks better. It like, looks better. Yeah, it looks like offense. a threat, actually. Yeah. So, so I think that's why that reflects the over-under in this game where it's went from 47.5 up to 49.5. Right. I think they do think that they can score on Arizona, and, of course, Arizona can score on Philly. So they do think this is probably going to be somewhat of a high-scoring matchup, yeah. which I kind of agree with them on that because – with Jalen Hurts, he does add a little bit more of an offensive gain for Philly. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens in that game. Yeah, so, I mean, that should be a good one. From that, we go to the Jets at L.A. to take on the Rams. and uh, Taking the Jets' money line here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. If you take the Jets' money line, just you put $2, <laughs> you might end up winning like $500. I'm just kidding. Um, the Jets uh, are <laughs> – this is the highest line of the week understandably so yeah of course the rams are favored by 17 and a half and it started at 13 and a half so even at 13 and a half which is kind of a high line people are still just banging money on the rams so yeah so now now it falls under two key numbers because it started at minus 13 and a half which was okay two touchdowns they get it now it's 17 and a half now two touchdowns and a field goal still don't get it done they basically got to beat them by three touchdowns in this game I'm not even coming close to touching this game because yeah, stay away. LA sometimes they show up and they look really good. Sometimes they don't. So. They also yeah they play up and down to the yep, competition so too. So they're probably played down to the competition and I don't even want to be nowhere near this game to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they lost to the Niners at home a couple weeks ago and that seemed like they were gonna yeah. they should have won that game. So yeah, that I mean either way it'll probably be a really shitty game. Yeah. Yeah. So stay away from that game. Kansas City at New Orleans. This one I'm excited about, and I would be more excited about it if Drew Brees was playing, but he is not. So we got Taysom Hill in there starting for the Saints again, which <clears throat> they have. Uh, what's the kid's name that was in Tampa last week? I don't know. That eats the W's. Jameis Winston. Oh, yeah, Jameis what? Winston. I don't understand why they're not starting Jameis. Because he's just, just absolutely horrible. I guess, but I, I just think like he's, <laughs> he's just a, he's just a pick machine. He loves throwing the interception. I mean, I mean he, he is starting, a wild card. Yeah. He's like Fitzpatrick, honestly. He's yeah. the same as Fitzpatrick. Him so, and Winston are in the same group. It's in like, a game like this, I just think that I I don't understand if honestly if, I agree with you. In this game, in like this if game, you want to throw Jameis Winston in there as a it wild card, gives you card, a better chance to win. Yeah, because the Kansas City defense isn't that great, so the, he could have a shot to throw for 400 yards in that game and if he he's can, if he's on. He threw for like 5,000 yards last year. He, I mean, who did? Winston. Jameis Winston? Yeah. Wow. I'm looking this up. Yeah, right you're now. gonna have to look that one up. I don't Seriously. know. Five thousand yards is close to the record books. I don't know if he threw for five thousand yards last he week. He threw last year. for a lot. But I'm I mean, that's. Right 
That's a little bit crazy on James, but he did throw Where I think 30 it? picks as well though. Oh yeah, he was 30 for 30. He was. He was. He was a 30 for 30. 5100 yards last year. Wow. 5100 yards, 30 interceptions. That's a shock. I didn't even think he threw that. Yeah, much. I'm telling you. And then where's the touchdown? 33 so, touchdowns, 30 interceptions, 5100. But I don't yards. even think is it even in the conversation? I don't think that James Winston's gonna start this game because I think they're just hon- they're honed on J- on Taysom. No, but it's an our conversation I know. because We're I the- don't think this is smart by Sean Payton. I, I, I mean, I think that Taysom Hill's definitely. I think he's going to throw an interception in this game. I think. Well, Taysom, and the Chiefs, I think they'll catch Taysom Hill slacking a little bit some here. And the there. Chiefs are an offensive fi- like firepower. So yeah, I'm gonna just make sure that they're not starting him. But uh, I wouldn't think that. Yeah, they, I'm honed in that they're t- they're starting Taysom Hill because I don't even think they would even question putting James Winston in there yet. Unless the Saints were getting blown out left and right since Breeze got hurt, then I think they would have thought of. Starting James Winston, but even all these wins, their offense is like yeah, eh. it's, it's okay. And last week yeah. they didn't win; they put up 21 points. I still think they could put up points against Kansas City, though. I think they'll be able to, even with Taysom Hill at quarterback. I think they could put up some points. Now on the flip side, you already know what to expect from Kansas City. They're gonna score. That's just what they are. Yeah. They're gonna score. They could score at will, basically. With anybody, I hadn't seen this line, offensive but... line. I'll come back to it. <laughs> all right, Cleveland takes on the Giants. Uh, Cleveland coming off of a very actually I would say if I, it's like a what is it called when you it's like a loss but it's like you gain something from it uh, I, a moral I don't know. victory I mean that's what it I could be a moral for. victory but to be honest the Ravens game? because yeah because I don't think Cleveland really was was in that game that that much like yeah the club this the score was really close but True, I guess you're right they were the Ravens dominated that game basically most of the whole entire game because Cleveland's defense couldn't stop them at all. They couldn't guess, stop them at all. Like they were, they were up twenty-eight to fourteen at one point, and like true. Cleveland really wasn't in this game until, you know, some some little bit at the end here that that you know they were scoring. They were able to score a little bit at the end. So I mean, I don't know. Going against a Giants team that's got really, I mean, I don't know if they got really anything that they want to play for. I mean, I guess they could. They can try to play for <laughs> for a playoff spot. See, I but I mean, I don't think that they're catching Washington. There's no way. I I don't think so either, especially with Daniel Jones starting. Because yeah. that's another thing. What? See, this is what I'm saying. A team like the Giants, if you have the salary cap, why not bring in Wentz next year? But the Eagles won't trade him there. No, they because won't. they're a division team. But something like that, where you bring in a quarterback that can actually throw, with Saquon Barkley coming back. Yeah. You have a defense that's actually on the up and up. Joe Judge has proven to be like a coach that guys want to play for so I just think in this matchup the Giants are a little sneaky in this in this matchup because the Giants defense the Giants secondary is pretty good and Baker Mayfield he's looked okay yeah but I think they could snatch up Baker Mayfield here a little bit maybe and cause a little bit of trouble so this is something definitely look out for as the Giants are four and a half point favorites at home so I guess we are gonna have to see what happens and this is a Sunday night matchup I don't really like it as a Sunday night matchup the Kansas City game should have probably been the Sunday night matchup instead of the yeah game, because honestly. these games the Sunday night game and the Monday night game are ass yeah because the Monday night game Monday night game Pittsburgh I think is just gonna I don't just even want to watch Pittsburgh they're gonna slaughter <laughs> I don't want to watch them anymore I mean <laughs> Pittsburgh is angry and now there's so many people talking shit about Pittsburgh that it's unreal they're they're probably they're the most 11 and 2 team in the history of the NFL that everybody's treating them like they're 2 and 11. Dude, like seriously. they're treating them like they're absolutely garbage and they don't even deserve to get in the playoffs. Like I this mean, team is still defense, good. In their defense, they have had injuries though. They have. Like but, I think they're starting their three starting linebackers are all out for the year. Yeah. And even or two starting linebackers are out. One of them their replacement was playing lights out and now he got hurt too and he's yeah. out too. So they have injuries and they have receivers that are more worried about their TikTok dances. <laughs> yeah, Juju. Juju. Juju's definitely gonna be dancing on the Bengals logo because he knows they're gonna win this game. <laughs> I don't think Man, he's got see, a problem with that. I don't know. I mean, this game is it, this game should be a blowout. It should, it should be. be a Monday it night blowout. Be. It definitely should be. The Pittsburgh Steelers should absolutely dominate the Bengals here. Then they got a great defense and they got a good offense. Mm-hmm. They should be able to cover this 13 point spread. I honestly think so that they should be able to cover that as Pittsburgh is decent this year against the spread. They're 6 and 4 mm-hmm. and when it's double digit spreads they're actually pretty solid in covering that. So I think that Pittsburgh's going to absolutely dominate this Monday night matchup. Yeah. And um, if they don't if they don't dominate Cincinnati with no Burrow in the back, 
I mean, <laughs> they can, they, they then there's going to be some questions. There's going to be some questions coming out <laughs> if they can't just dominate Cincinnati. Can we cancel their to. playoff spot and just be <laughs> like, you know what? You guys were good, but now you're not. And so yeah, they have to go in there and just absolutely punch the Bengals in the mouth and just to. make a statement, a 45-0 yeah, statement. I agree with and that. And just absolutely smash the Bengals. Then That's it would true. it'll take everybody out from talking a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, shout out to Adam Cotton. Who let us know that Stafford is not playing. I just looked it up. I, I don't think they've made that decision yet that he's not playing, but it is that, up in the air. And that, and that is comes in, that is pretty big. Because that's for the Saturday game. Yeah, and that's uh no, that's a Sunday game. That's the Tennessee game. No, Stafford. Yeah, Stafford Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know why I thought the line. Yeah. They put Chase Daniels in there. Nah. That's why the line is so high. Yeah, they put Chase Daniels in there. I don't know. That they, makes sense. Then Detroit might not even be able to score. I don't I don't know. <laughs> Chase Daniels isn't – he's nothing really to sneeze at. He's not too good. Yeah, no, I, I don't want Chase Daniels. <laughs> yep. And uh, I see – hold on. I see our boy Manny probably chimed in there and said something yeah. about tonight. The tonight's game, I think. Keenan Allen is active. Should you start him in the fantasy league, or do you think he'll get limited playing time tonight? So, all right. So, Keenan Allen tonight, depending – yeah, it's a little bit iffy because he is a uh, he is the number one receiver on that team. I mean, I I don't I don't know about putting him in the fantasy because I mean this is a this is a tough call. What honestly. was his injury? You know, I don't know what his injury was, but it's a tough call because they are going against Las Vegas, which is 25th in the league against passing. So this is a good area for him to you know score a touchdown and get some yards racked up, but. Uh, being injury riddled, I don't know. They might limit him. They might limit him tonight. So in that case, I would probably just, I'd probably sit him, because just the injury, you know. See, and they're even saying that limited, he could be limited. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't start him if he's going to be limited. He will likely be, be limited. Yeah. Yeah. So. There's no reason to put a limited player in. So I guess Stafford is out apparently in really? Detroit. They're saying that. So they're saying that they're. All right. Unless they're trying to give everyone a little Christmas miracle. <laughs> yeah. They're like, he's out. And then on Sunday, they're like, he's playing. Merry Christmas. Yeah. So, I mean. But, yeah. I, if, if he's out, that makes sense. If That's Stafford's out, then, then, I mean, I can see a reason for uh, for that 11-point spread. Still, though, I don't know. I mean, I just never trust Tennessee. I don't know. Their defense is not that great. Defense is ass. Yeah, their yeah. defense is not that good. And it's just, Jesus, you don't know when it All comes right. to that. And that's a key number, 11. So, you need two touchdowns out of them. Mm-hmm. So, all right, well, That's a tough one. we'll go back to the show. Um, now it's time for Frank to give us some gambling advice. What, what you got for us? What gambling advice do you want me to tell? Them? All right. What questions do you have? Tell me about a parlay. We don't know parlay. much about a parlay. So I'm a new gambler. I want to know what a parlay is because it sounds like a All French right. word for so, <laughs> let's dance or something. All right, so a parlay. A lot of people hate it when I, when I say this, but it's the truth. Parlays are for suckers. Parlays are bad bets that's what the casino wants you to make that's what the sports book wants you to bet the furthest you should ever go on a parlay is two teams nothing other than that so a parlay is when you're taking multiple teams on a ticket hoping that all those teams win and when they do you usually get a max payout you get a good payout but the odds are very slim that a three four five six seven team eight team parlay your ten team parlays are ever gonna hit mm-hmm. okay it's very slim when it comes to that the most we ever go is a two-team parlay gives you about a 33 percent chance of winning that which is still pretty bad yeah but that's the most that we would ever go so parlay is when you put multiple teams on one ticket and all of them have to win and how many people have had their 16 17 parlays lose by one <laughs> that's <laughs> it the worst. happens all the time and i see it all the time and guess what if you straight bet all those and you had six and one then you're looking at a good day instead of losing your 20 dollars parlay that's a good point yep. so with that we'll lead into our free plays of the weekend you have yours i have mine mine is in the game that we talked about with miami in new england now like i said in this game you got miami with two at quarterback now if fitzpatrick was quarterback i don't know about this one i'm about to tell you guys but so far Tua looks like he's gonna play and be quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, going against a New England defense that is a great defense. They're a great, great defense. And Miami is a little slow on offense when Tua is ahead of things. So, flip it again. Now we go New England's offense, which has been terrible all year. They just look like they can't move the ball, except for 
It's the miracle against the 45 points they put up against the Chargers. Uh, uh, but that wasn't offensive points. A, like a <laughs> that wasn't because of their offense. Yeah. So you'd be Shusky. fooled to think that they're off. You'd think Cam Newton maybe threw for 500 yards. No, that didn't happen that game. Right. That was their special team. I think he threw for scored. like under 100. <laughs> yeah. So, wait, funny. That's, that was crazy. They yeah. scored 45 points and he throws for that little, <laughs> little yeah, bit of passing yards. weird. But their offense has been terrible this whole year. Miami's defense has been great this whole year. So... Now we got a cancellation on both sides of the offenses. I'm going to go with the under on this game. But since the numbers dropped to 41 and a half, I'm going to buy it up a point and a half to 43, which is a key number. We're going to, well, actually the key number is 42. We're going to bypass that and go to 43, buy a point and a half, and take the under 43 points in the Miami Dolphins game. All right, all right. So I, before we started this, was thinking I was going to take Washington plus five and a half right now. Uh, because they're at home, you know, they're in first place in the NFC East. Seattle has shown that their defense is ass. And so I was thinking, all right, Washington could come within that. But after seeing this line, as long as it stays here, I'm changing my free play of the week. I'm taking Kansas City minus three because I think the Chiefs, now that they're in first place, obviously with the Steelers right behind them and playing a shitty Bengals team, you know, Kansas City kind of should win this, needs to win this, so they have something to play for. Obviously, I have man crush every day from Mahomes. So, <laughs> if the line's minus three, I'm taking the Chiefs. I think with Taysom Hill starting, I don't think that Saints offense is as explosive and as dangerous as it could be. The Chiefs defense isn't outstanding, but they can make plays and they have playmakers. So, that's my bet. With uh, I'm taking Kansas City minus three on the road in New Orleans take on the Saints. So, nice. Um, that does it for our preview for week 15. Good betting advice. If we were to parlay our bets, I would it would be the under on Miami and uh, New England and Kansas City minus three. But don't do anything more than that. <laughs> <laughs> um, last week we hit on both of our free plays. So if we would have parlayed it, we would have been doing great. Yeah. Um, but all right. So now we'll move we'll move on to the NBA. The NBA is coming up starting Tuesday. Preseason is in full swing. I'm super pumped. The arenas, obviously, having performed in a lot of these arenas for me, it's so weird to see the arenas just empty. And before when it was the bubble, it was like a new thing. So, like, it was different. But now you see the arenas so different. The first thing, let's just talk about this real quick. James Harden, what are your thoughts on this whole... He looks like Rick Ross. I don't Ooh. know. He looked like he's gained some weight. <laughs> he looks like he's gained Dude. some weight. I don't, I don't know. James Harden just doesn't look like... I, I don't I don't know. He seems like he's becoming dysfunctional. I'm tired of these. He's just becoming dysfunctional again. Like I don't understand. Like it's I don't know if it was Westbrook that didn't want to play with him, or was it Harden that didn't want to play with Westbrook, or Dude, I, I don't know what whole... is going on. I don't. I just feel like James Harden needs to be just casted out and on his team, and just he can demand that whatever he wants to do on his own team, and that's it. Dude, just, I'm so tired. They shouldn't tired. even put John Wall with him or anything like that. Just leave him by himself. He's probably gonna find out a problem with John right. Wall or something. So it's like. He just seems dysfunctional. I don't know. He doesn't seem like his head's in the right area. It seems it seems like every league, obviously, there's a balance between trying to please the players with the Players Association and then the ownership as well. Yeah. The NBA, to me, has just gone too far now. Like, I'm going to vent here for a minute because I'm tired of these, like, the NBA players almost feeling like they're bigger than the team. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, you're still employed by the organization. So James Harden, for example, I, the team has done everything to please him that they didn't even have to do in the first place. Like, that's your job. And well, I'm, the, the biggest thing that kind of got to me is like all these younger guys like uh, Jason Tatum, uh, who else was it? Uh, Brandon Ingram, getting these contract extensions and getting a player option. And to me, that's just such a slap in the face. If I were the ownership where I drafted this kid, I'm giving you a huge payday. Sure, you've earned it, of course, but now you're trying to get out of it a year earlier, and it's not even a year earlier. When you have the player option for the year earlier, it almost becomes two years earlier because now guys like Anthony Davis, what they're doing last year, like I would be, there needs to be some kind of, I feel like. Balance. Yeah, like if you're gonna request a trade, then you're suspended for a year. Yeah. Because you commit, like you committed, and I get everyone's always like, oh, well, you know, everyone's like, it's not fair that the team can just trade the player whenever they want and all this. It's like, yeah, like, that's just not, it's like that. Like, 
when you go and start a new job, you get assigned your hours. Like, you know, it's not like you tell the store what time to open. Like, if you work at Target, you're not like, hey, yeah. um, Walmart's over. We're going to so, open yeah. at one yeah. to fit my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, like, they give you the hours and you, like, at the end of the day, that's just how it works. Yeah. And I get it. The players have the leverage and that's just the truth. But, like, Harden, there all these stories about him. The team reported to camp on a Saturday. There's videos of him out here partying in Vegas. Yeah, then with little baby. With little baby at Bloom. Like, yeah. Then on Sunday, they're expecting him there for a workout. Sunday night, he's at Dre's. Like, dude, like that's if I was a teammate, I'd I'd be so like pissed. As I'm, I don't know how to. If I were the team, I know it sucks because it's gonna cost you wins, and this is where the leverage comes into play. But at some point, like the teams, the ownership, the league needs to like. You know, put their foot down. The thing is, is that what I realized with James Harden is he doesn't have that Jordan, Kobe, but n- LeBron but who mentality. Does? He doesn't have that who mentality. Who does right now? Mentality. Giannis is LeBron. probably LeBron. LeBron. LeBron still has that mentality. He always does. He knows what but needs even to LeBron, be done. And I, I'm not shitting on LeBron for this, but even LeBron takes games off and does all that thing. And he he's does. like, oh, I'll take the first three weeks off. AD can hold it down. Like, but he knows when it's time to get into mode and time right. to get into check check mode. He knows what they got to yeah, do. I mean, time I to play LeBron, off mode. No, he knows yeah. what needs to be done. Jason Tatum is another one I like. He's another one that's worked out with Kobe and has the same mindset as Kobe. And I do think that uh, it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, when it comes to James Harden, I think maybe in his own mind, he knows he's probably never going to win a ring. So I think I he's just, it it's is. just, and I'm honestly, I go out on a limb and I'm definitely saying this. He's never going to win a ring. I don't think James Harden is never going to win a ring because I just do not think he has that mentality. He doesn't have that killer mentality to where he is zoned in on winning a ring. He wants to win a ring. I don't think so. I think he just wants to be the best player on the team and be able to dictate and do whatever the hell he wants to do. I guess I just don't see it with any, I mean, I'm sorry, but even like, like I said, I, and I get, I'm not knocking these guys because like Tatum, for example, who took you, you know, that's a negotiating tool for him to be like, hey, I won't sign the extension unless you give me the player option. If yeah. I were the team, I'd be like, fine then, don't sign the extension. And I'd take that risk and he's taking that risk too that he doesn't get hurt this year. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean, some can call it stupid, but somebody needs to do that or else like, where is this going to stop? At some point, you know, Zion, you think he's just going to be like, give me a uh, player option after the second year of exactly. a five-year That's match. That's exactly like, what they're going to be. There's, no, there's nothing to it. At some point, like there needs to be somebody standing up for these teams. Like, And like I said... In the end, they are an employee working at yes. a job. And this is in why, in a way, I'm not... I'm just complaining about the whole situation because I don't blame the players. Like, hey, if the ownership's giving you that leverage, if they're giving you that option to do that, yeah. I take it too. So I get it, but it's just kind of really frustrating to see that because it screws. I mean, I just think for starters, it screws screws over so many people. It does. The league should that same day that Harden was out at the club, they uh, released a memo that they the players can't go out to bars, they can't be at clubs, and if they go to restaurants, they have to be in a like a closed off yeah, and section. Yeah, of course, him being superstar, he ain't gonna listen to any of it. He's just gonna go do what he right. wants. Right. Well, what are you gonna be like? like what are you gonna do to me? You ain't gonna, what are you gonna do? Sit me? You ain't gonna sit me. I'm James Harden. That's my point. Yeah. And at some point, <laughs> somebody needs to be like, yeah, we're gonna fucking sit you. Like, sorry, you're suspended. Yeah, and you know who would do that is Popovich. Right, and <laughs> Popovich that, wouldn't hold anything right. like that, and he it would leads just to success, though. I, I just think so. It does. That's why Popovich and the Spurs made the playoffs for like 20 straight years yep. because of that. Like, no, you know, I performed there, mm-hmm. and even I at first I thought it was weird, but now I get it. When I performed there, once you know how I wear the jerseys mm-hmm. to perform, um, they they said that I'd, I'd have to perform in something Spurs related, but not a uh, player. Because they don't want one player to be bigger than the team. Yeah. Even their like their cheerleaders and their dancers, dance team, they wear a Spurs jersey or Spurs, but in the back, it doesn't have a player name. So that's and not what they're about. That's not yeah, they're about the team. Exactly. And the whole league, like the NBA has just gone so into like it's players. all about the players. Yeah. And it's just kind of like I mean, good for the players, but I just think like I don't know what I would do at the next uh, CBA because it's 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 getting out of hand. Like I can't even build around a player like the Celtics now that signed Tatum they got him on a five-year extension with the player option after the fourth year which means they pretty much have three years of that contract Mm -hmm. to do something because if they don't by the end of the third year everyone's like oh he'll opt out next year so you might as well trade him now exactly like there's just nothing to it well it's getting carried away with you're right yeah it's too much but that's my rant on the NBA (laughs) but hopefully let me answer Gil's question real quick about the parlays he's chimed in asking about teasers Doing a two-team teaser. 
I like those personally. I do like those because yeah, you can manipulate the, the lines a lot on those two team teasers and that definitely ups your, from 33% chance of winning, it definitely ups it a little bit by manipulating those spreads. Then the return just isn't as much. Yeah, the return is definitely thing. smaller than what a regular two team parlay would be, but a two team teaser, are they are, they are pretty solid options. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so one last thing before we go uh, quick on the NBA. Do you have a sleeper team? And do you have a team that you think will underperform like severely this year who you're like, everyone thinks they'll be a playoff team and they just won't? My team that I think is going to be kind of a sleeper is actually one of my favorite team, which is going to be the Phoenix Suns. Mm -hmm. So I think the Suns will actually be pretty good this year. I really yeah, do think that they're going to be a solid squad. Their bench needs a little bit of help, but with, uh, you know, I think their front court is going to be pretty dominant. Chris Paul going over there, I think is huge. I think that's going to be a big thing. And he's one of those Devin old school Booker. guys who's probably going to try to He is. Compete. And, like, look what he did in uh, for OKC when he played for OKC. Like, they, nobody thought they were going to do anything. Right. And he actually led that team to pretty good. They, they looked pretty well. They were playing pretty well. So I can only think that he's going to make great things happen in Phoenix. So I think Phoenix is going to be a little bit of a sleeper that, that, that notches up there. Not really what people expect. As for a team that's in the top that I think that is uh, probably going to not do as well as they should, I'm going to go out and say... The Brooklyn Nets. I'm gonna think. I think everybody thinks that mm -hmm. for some reason they're gonna get to the finals this year because Durant and Kyrie are I playing. I don't see it. Yeah. But it takes time to gel. It just takes time Even to the gel. Even heat that first year. Yeah. It takes time to gel superstars because yeah. if they don't complement each other, then there's a little bit of a struggle there, and it just doesn't work. So this is the first year they're actually gonna be playing together, and everybody thinks, like I said, they're gonna be automatic playoff team. They're probably gonna be up there for a the finals. I think they're gonna struggle a little bit. Yeah. Um, my sleeper team, I mean, this isn't really a sleeper team, but I think I think Dallas will be a lot better this I like year. Dallas. Also because a lot of the other teams in the West have kind of just gotten a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm going a true, true sleeper team, um, in a weird way, I don't know why, I feel like the Kings can be frisky. I feel like they've always, the last couple of years, been like on the, on the outside looking in on a playoff spot. Mm -hmm. And I think they can... They can make some noise, obviously, with uh, the Aaron Fox in there. Um, you know, they still have Harrison Barnes. They so still we'll have... see how he plays because he just got his max deal, if I believe. That's true. Darren he did. Fox. Yeah, he so did. We'll um, make, you know, you got to be motivated. And then when you are when you get paid <laughs> a couple hundred million dollars, <laughs> that, it's kind of hard to stay motivated because you're already true. getting paid. So it's like, who cares how I play, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, if there's any motivation, they drafted the point guard as well, uh, yeah. Hal Burton. So, I don't know. I think that they could be frisky. I think the Kings could do something. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Kings make a trade. Like, possibly, like, maybe Harden is the one that goes there. So, I don't know. Something like that. But I feel like Harden will X that and be like, I'm not playing in Sacramento. No, no, no. I, I, that's not a mainstream place. I don't want to play there. He'll probably – dysfunctional, guys. This guy yeah. is just dysfunctional, I'm telling you. Yeah. And, that's <laughs> it. and I mean, I, another team that I think actually will – I don't want – I mean, people are high on this team already, but – I think Philly's gonna be the first seed in the East. I think I think they're gonna get it together this year. They have a lot of pieces around Embiid and Simmons that they can withstand. I think injuries this year. Mm -hmm. You know, just a guy like Danny Green being there, for example, uh, I think will be huge. And you know, that kind of veteran like team now that they're starting to put together there. Um, you know, what's his name? Seth Curry, I think. Oh no, he went to Brooklyn. Yeah, he's on. Brooklyn. He's on Brooklyn. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why I said that. There's another guy that they got, but I think Philly just has a lot of role players that are veterans and that have leadership and, you know, obviously champions, you know, with Dwight was crazy, but Dwight having come off a chip, Danny Green coming off another championship. So they have those, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just Danny Green for MVP over here, but I think I, you just love Ben Simmons. I do, like, I do like Ben Simmons. I like Ben Simmons more than Embiid. I do. I just think yeah. he's a better. Um, I think Philly will be decent. I do think. I, I, that's the number one seed. I don't know. I just think that. I think they could. I think. Do, I, think decent. I think a team like the Bucks, after going two straight years of getting the number one seed and I winning, I feel like so everybody's many games, a little bit not talking about Miami though. Again, I mean Miami's still going to be good. Miami with Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what it is. I mean, if they could snatch. James Harden? Nah. I don't know. I mean, they, if they, that's a place that James Harden would go. He would definitely, he would definitely he's, go, he's, to he would go to Miami. But I, th they I could don't snatch know. him somehow. I don't know. I mean, 
who knows how I'll play with Jimmy Butler because Jimmy yeah. Butler doesn't take no shit. That's what really. I'm saying. I don't so, think that'll work. That's yeah. why I love Jimmy Butler because Jimmy Butler ain't about it like he's that. Not, he's, he's like, not. no. He's like, we're here to work. So, yeah. 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 We'll we'll see where that goes. The Wizards obviously getting Westbrook. I, I forgot about that, but I just I feel like it's just the same thing. They, they got John Wall, just maybe a little bit friskier version of John Wall. But they know. have actually John Wall playing now. He hasn't been playing. Yeah. You know, so him with I, Beal. I don't know. I don't Listen. know how they'll play. I don't know. Westbrook's another one that maybe is like a problem child that gets passed around. I mean, <laughs> same thing I with Harden. I, I, I don't know, know why. I like West too. I like. I love the way that he plays. I love he's his energy and everything like that. But he gets passed around the league because it's like I don't know if he's the problem or not. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he's the problem or not. But yeah. he gets passed around a lot. But I do love the way that he plays. He plays 110 percent like all the time. That's true. <laughs> I the love energy. the way that he plays. So all right, well. Uh, that just about does it. I will. I do want to say congrats to Giannis. I, in the weird way, there was all these rumors about him coming to Toronto as well. But yeah. I'm glad he stayed. Yeah, congrats. I, You'll never win a ring. So, <laughs> I mean. Uh, nah, I like Giannis though. I just think I that, like, I I like like that loyalty. Too. I like the loyalty too, but he's never going to win a ring. I don't know what to tell him. I, I mean, don't think he'll win it with the Bucks. It's whatever. But I think maybe he gets traded <laughs> to Toronto eventually. <laughs> you can only dream. Um, well, anyway, that does it. We'll, we'll obviously start talking more NBA now that the season's getting started. Uh, yeah. But we will definitely close out the NFL season strong. Looking forward to a fun weekend. Uh, remember, try to avoid more than two team parlays, as Frank said. See you next time.